I wanted to let you all know that I really enjoyed the lunch. <laughs> because I'm on Weight Watchers. <laughs> and I really miss McDonald's. <laughs> Thank you for your assistance. <laughs> family tree as we know it and it's hard. My father, the Reverend Mister, and um, Aunt Eileen McNulty Beale, which is Aunt Nancy, and Aunt Angela. Right? And Aunt has an E on the end of it. But he got the same. Typo. Uh, that, that, that sucks even more than you know. Oh, <laughs> because you tried really hard. <laughs> we have printed materials. <laughs> Um, anyway, so so here is a grandpa, right, and grandma Phyllis, right. So grandpa Michael A, who everyone called Tony, and Phyllis, and this is grandpa's side of the family, and this is grandma's side of the family, right. And so what I wanted to concentrate on today, because we have the most information about this side of the family, and I attribute that mainly to Grandma. She was very much into the family tree. She really wanted things to be remembered. Yeah, she was, and, and as a matter of fact, I found some documentation. And she was listing out all the different people in the family, and she listed me at the end. Oh. So, the youngest grandson. Yeah, I was course. the youngest, but she skipped a lot in between. <laughs> Meeting all of us. We shall be named nameless over there. <laughs> uh, so, oh, you're singled out. Now. Anyway, uh, so I wanted to, to concentrate here on the McGrath side of, the, of Grandma's family. There. So let me tell you a little bit about them. So Grandma. Maria Halligan McGrath, right? So that was Nani's mom. That will go back one time. There, there is Maria Halligan and Philip McGrath. Angela McGrath is Nani, who is Grandma Phyllis's mom. Everybody tracking? Yep. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> there is a point there. Is a You're making us work for our continuing. Maria, Maria Helgen, she was born in 1835, and that was in Old Court, Manor Kilbride in County Wicklow. And I wanted to just show you one wow. little thing. Oh, she looks kind of stark. Oh, wow. Look at cool. you. Wow. Look at this. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Wow. This is, I'm going to give you this call. So is that the West Coast of Ireland? No, no, this is right near Dublin. Oh, okay. oh that's, yeah. This is just south of Dublin, okay? okay. So Old Court was here, and I'm going to show you that she yeah. was married to uh, Philip McGrath, and they moved into Bodine's, which was the, which was the uh, farm, the family farm of the McGraths. Uh, they did pretty well for themselves. Philip was a, Philip was a importer exporter of horses and things like that, and. Uh, they bought the farm next door called Thornberry, right? So that's that's kind of so she had to move from here to there, all right? Here, use this to point. Thank you, my friend. All right, so there you go. And anyway, so she had her first child when she was 20. And she had her 14th child oh, when she was 39. Oh, wow. 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 a long way to go, <laughs> sister. Catch up. Yeah, so Laura, 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 number three. <laughs> Sadly, that 14th child came along in 1875, and her husband dies two years later. So she's a widow at age 39. Wow. 14 kids would do that. And all 14 survived? 
and oh, wow. oh, she's a widow at 42. Sorry, yes. And uh, the 14 oh. kits were were there. And as to whether they survived, I'm going to get to that. Some more than others. Uh, <laughs> not uh, somebody. Not. So here's here's what happens. She dies, and some strangers show up at the door and say, "Your husband and his business owe us money." Oh. And she's not sure what to do, and she gives him the money. Oh. And as a result, the, his business is gone. She's given them, I think, a sizable chunk of money. She's got 14 kids to support. She's run out of money, and the two farms are put up for auction. Oh, oh. so sad. That was my retirement fund. Oh. Yes. <laughs> 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 so the two farms are put up for auction. Here's the good news. All of the townspeople come to the auction and they all refuse to bid. There's an article about it in the paper and they talk about how the auctioneer had to go home and empty handed. Wow. So uh, they all did that in solidarity with Maria and actually the, the two farms ended up staying in the family. Oh, wow. wow, great story. That's a great story. What did you do with the money then? Huh? She farmed. She just farmed. She just farmed. She just farmed. Yeah, well, I think yeah. later, the next generation farmed. Um, so this is oh, wow. the 14 kids, right? Oh, wow. wow. And um, I try to put a flag by where they kind of ended up. And as you can see, Karen, to your question, we think a bunch of them died very young, which would be wow. these guys here. Oh. This guy died when he was eight. Oh. Guy. And uh, and then, but the older ones uh, all went, except for we're not sure about Al Ellen, but we got some data on the others. So one of the ones I wanted to uh, tell you about was Julia. She went to Australia. Yes. And Julia, she, she got married when she was in Ireland. But her husband was a, a fond of the drink. <laughs> and he, had, yeah. he ended up at the bottom of the street. Oh. So let that be a lesson to you. <laughs> <laughs> what are you implying? <laughs> 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 so anyway. So I just need to be more uplifting. <laughs> <laughs> so tonight there will be no drinking by the street. <laughs> Nice tea for everything. That's right. The drinks will be served far from the stream. Um, and so, anyway, so she immigrated to Australia in 1884 with her brother Patrick, right? And Patrick, uh, you know, kind of looked after her a little bit. She was 25. So she went off at age 25 and said, see you later. And I wanted to read to her. You probably can't read that font, but let me tell you what she said. Never to return again. And to think of those I left behind with sorrow, grief, and pain, my fortune seeker find, my grave away in far Brisbane, with burning brow and breaking heart, I hurried to the boat, their prayers and blessings following me to Queensland coast. Wow. So, sad. That's so you know, she kind of knew she was never going to see him again. So this was her diary we found. And, and in her diary, there's six weeks of, of entries while she's on the boat. So it took her six weeks to get to Australia on a, on a boat. How'd you find the diary? Uh, actually, our, uh, we have some relatives in Ireland, the Halligan family, who we're, we've gotten pretty friendly with. Michael's been to visit them, and they've been to visit us. And uh, they, uh, they found it. They went to Australia and visited the, the family over there. Wow. 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 Cool. So, and, um, so there is uh, Julia McGrath <coughs> O'Mahony. When she got to Australia, she married a man named O'Mahony. We would call it O'Mahony here in the States, but they say O'Mahony. Um, and uh, she had six kids, as I mentioned. And one of them, this guy here, is her son John, which they, they call him Jack. And he was good friends with, he was the first cousin to Grandma Phyllis, right? And they corresponded quite a bit. He came, as Dad mentioned, he came over 
during the, uh, he was in the Army, the Australian Army, came over here for some training, for some special something or other, right? And I think they connected at that point and became friends ever, ever after. And um, so they uh, corresponded back and forth, and Grandma was really good about keeping all the letters and stuff. And I have oh, most of them. Oh, wonderful. Wow. So she would write him poems, and it was really nice. But anyway, so Jack, that's Jack. That, those are the three. Um, and this is Jack later in life. Now, I have a trivia question for you. <laughs> <laughs> what was his occupation? A lounge singer, a zookeeper, a paper salesman, or a sheep counter? A sheep, sheep counter. I see paper salesman. Paper salesman. Paper salesman. Paper salesman. No way. Sheep. A sheep counter. A sheep counter. From 1919 to 1955, and he claimed he had counted over 35 million sheep during his illustrious no career. Wow. I mean, that could make you go to the stream doing that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, I think I I think we've got newspaper articles written about him where they, they say it puts put some people to sleep, but it obviously keeps him awake. So, uh, anyway, Jack O'Mahony, Grandma's good buddy. All right, so now back to the 14. Therese McGrath Lawrence. Okay, so Therese, you can see, is uh, where are we? Right here. And she went to Australia to see her brother and her sister. And she was a, a bridesmaid. Good talking to you. I'm, no, 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 I'm trying to find the switch. It's behind the one to turn off this light. Oh, no. Oh, we got it. Oh, okay. Much better. Carry on. Yeah. Thank you. Ah. Okay. Oh, much better. Well, should we go back and start from the beginning? No, <laughs> no. no way. Okay. Uh, so anyway, uh, Therese went over to Australia to join her sister Julia and her brother... Patrick. Jack. 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 No. Oh, is Patrick. she Tony. Patrick. 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 Oh, but... I'll show you. I'll show you. Who's the sheep so, oh, chosen. Julia's here. Patrick. Right? Wow. Patrick was her brother. They oh, went God. together over to Australia. Good job, Teresa Monica. followed Teresa afterwards. Okay. Monica's the quit. smart one in the family. <laughs> oh, Monica. <laughs> okay, so um, she got a job as a nanny uh, when she got there. And she got uh, the, the guy she went to work for was this Major Von or DeVoe, There's Major no DeVoe, okay? He was an a, a Army uh, officer, right? And Major DeVoe uh, got uh, reassigned while she's being the nanny, right? So they're in Australia, Major DeVoe gets reassigned. He gets sent to Punjab, India. While in Punjab, the fort that they're staying at gets attacked and there is a terrible battle, and she runs out onto the battlefield and saves a bunch of people's lives oh, wow. and treats the wounded. Wow. And the people, uh, the senior officers or whatever at the fort, sent word to the queen, Queen Victoria, and said, hey, this lady needs some recognition. And wow. Queen Victoria wow. presented her with the Red Cross uh, the Royal Red Cross, which is a very high honor in England. And this is it. And there's Queen Victoria. And this is her, this is Therese and wearing her Royal Red Cross. That's fair. Nice. That's right. Oh, wow. You know, if you were really impressed, you'd remember which one I am. <laughs> <laughs> So that's Teresa. She, but it, she ended up uh, while she came back to uh, to oh, England. But she ended up and finished her life back in Punjab, where she married a uh, drum major. And I was like drum major, you know, like. But I can't find anything more except for that he was a drum major. So one day I'll figure out what a drum major, major in the army. Well, that's yeah. I was thinking. I don't know. So uh, there you go, um, Teresa. Uh, now, real quick, we're getting closer now to our people who we know, right? So 
Bill, stay away. I'm away. Okay. <laughs> so, Catherine, Katie, McGrath. Oh. 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 Yeah. Did you all, did you all know McGrath. this? That is who I'm named after. Just I knew point. that. Just in case you didn't know. Just I know. knew that. Is her name? Uh, yeah, I'm <laughs> sure. So she was she short. short yeah, you're with a K. Doesn't start with a C. I am with a K. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. K K K D. The sing along is tomorrow. I'll wait till then. Katie McGrath, born in 1866, she emigrated to England with her husband James Hallowett at the age of 21, right? Wow. So Aunt Katie, oh, this is Grandma's Aunt Katie, right? The Aunt Katie. Okay, now you're tracking. Now I'm tracking. I'm okay. Uh, so they moved. They moved to England first, and I thought maybe it was a scandal, like they had to go shoot to England. They were over there for less than a year, and then they went to the U.S. She writes, I found, she wrote in a letter that she's like, we liked it okay, but Grandma didn't. And I'm like, did Grandma move in with the newlyweds? <laughs> bad move. But, really bad so move. she and James Holloway went to the U.S., not sure where Grandma went. <laughs> I think Grandma might have gone back to Ireland. But just, they came to the U.S. and they were there basically on their own. They had two kids. James Jr. and Irene, as in anti-Irene, oh, yeah, yep. and um, James unfortunately dies in 1896, a sad story too, we got too many sad stories as far as that goes, he, uh, according to Katie, he had a, a mental breakdown and he jumped off, I found out that he jumped off the Adams Street Bridge into the Chicago River. Oh. So yeah. tomorrow when you go under the Adams Street Bridge, you're going to see a little... Yeah. 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 The river so thing going on. Stay away from the street. Don't drink on the river. You're not, yeah. 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 not doing well with water. Yeah. bodies of water are not our thing. So she's, she's left a widow wow. at age 29. Wow with a four-year-old and a seven-year-old. And James's family, he had a good insurance policy. Obviously, he thought, well, I can do this because my family's gonna be taken care of, I got good insurance. And his family came in, swooped down, and claimed oh, the insurance money. Oh, wow. Wow. Took off wow. Nice. So they got not a nickel and she lost their house. Jeez. So she ends up, uh, wow. as it turns out, moving in uh, with Angela and Martin, I'll get to that in a second. So this is they're in uh, they're in Calvary Cemetery, which you all know. Okay, now going right up our alley, Angela, right? Angela McGrath Cosgrave. That is Grandma's mom, Grandma Phyllis's mom. She was born May first in 1868. I can tell you definitively, she was born May first, 1868. Because every she lied about it all day long. Every form she filled out, every social security form, everything they'd say, How old are you? And she'd say, I'm twenty one. She was <laughs> said she was twenty nine when she was gone for a while. She just was a big old age liar. <laughs> and grandma did too. And grandma did and her, Grandma and lied too. Absolutely. Yeah. I was wow. glad you brought grandma. that up. Totally. Grandma <laughs> lied about her all the time. She, she did. did. She sure it was, did. But, but she learned that from her mother. So I, <laughs> I found uh, just the other day in preparation for this fine event, I found her uh, baptismal records from Ireland. And in fact, she was she was baptized two days after May first, eighteen sixty-eight. So that was it. definitive. And so we know now. Anyway, so at age twenty-four, she came, and we know that she was nudged by her parents because Katie, her sister, who was already here with James, they had two kids. The second Irene was on the way. Katie was having a little. Uh, she was down in the dumps, we'll say. We think maybe because James was uh, not doing so well. A fond of the drink, as they say. <laughs> oh, no. And so Angela came to the U.S. to help stabilize that situation, help with the kids. That brought her here. 
while she was here, she married Martin Cosgrave, and they had one child, Phyllis, Philomena. Um, and there they are. Um, the happy couple, right? Look at that You know, there's, some, there, Patrick, there's something similar to every story, and that is the husband dies early. <laughs> And the wife lives on. But Kathy got me some salad that tasted weird. <laughs> 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 well, you gotta walk it off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you've lived too long. Yeah, you're, you're, you're solid. <laughs> Pete, all I said, stay away from the, the, the water. Fox yeah. River. The drink in the water. The Fox River. Yeah. yeah. So, um, the hot tub. <laughs> Angela's widowed at uh, age 37 with a six year old, old right? Yeah. Uh, I wanted to show you one other important photo there. Oh, 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 Angela oh, and her favorite grandson, Michael. Oh, so oh, that's so cute. So cute. Okay, Don't so... Don't get into the dream, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> As I said, um, Angela was widowed at age 37 and, and Martin died uh, February 15, 1905, right? So, there's Martin. And his occupation on the, in the official paper was as a motorman. And what, what a motorman did back in those days was there were these tunnels underneath the loop in Chicago, right? Uncle Mike has talked about that. Yes. That's part of his tour, yeah. Yes, on, yeah. this is on the $2 tour, if yeah. Dad ever gives it to you. But yeah. these tunnels were there in the, in the loop. And they had these motormen that would drive these little carts and it would deliver stuff back and forth between the businesses, but they wouldn't get stuck in the mud. And so they needed a more efficient way to move stuff between the businesses. So they did the mail, the coal, the freight, all in these tunnels. There's 60 miles of tunnels underneath the loop. They're still there. But um, they also, the tunnels were dug beneath the frost line. So beneath the frost line, the temperature is always 59 degrees. It's a consistent 59 degrees all the time. So they would blow the air from the tunnels into the hotels and the theaters as air conditioning. And they oh, sold wow. the tunnel air. Oh, they they sold the tunnel air. I feel like this is They sold the tunnel air. And so Grandpa worked down there driving these things around. The problem is, one day, he was driving one of these things and he took a turn too fast and fell out in his head and he died. Oh, oh, and that's, that was how Martin Cosgrave died. What I found interesting about this photo is right there. I'm going to read this to you. It says, the safety committee, the safety committee, um, may overlook something. See for yourself that all is safe. <laughs> this is the sign down there in the tunnel where he died. So maybe he couldn't read. I don't know. But uh, and then they show, of course, this guy coming along. And there's a fork in the road, and another guy's coming right at him. So very sad. So that was that was Martin's. Do you know anything more about him? Where he was from, or his family? Yeah, he came from County Carlow. And I have it on that map I showed you before. I'll show you where, where he is, where he came from. But that's all you know about him. It's all we know. I I know he didn't meet Grandma until they were both here. And, and his father was here too, right? Yeah, there. Um, right. There was. Um, I have uh, funeral cards for several of the Cosgroves. So how old was he when he died? So um, anyway, that's that's some of the information on him, and, and so. I wanted to give you one little, this is my last slide. The two hour version is going to come next year. <laughs> um, but I wanted to show you, I always, when I think about our family, like where, what was going on in the world when these people lived, right? So here's Maria Halligan McGrath who had the 14 children, right? And she was born the year before the Alamo, Battle of the Alamo. And when she was a young kid, she lived through the Irish potato wow. family. Right? Wow. Then she decided to have 14 kids. Mm -hmm. I, you know, whatever. Um, then, as you can see here, Nani, right, was born shortly after Lincoln was assassinated. Right? And, and I believe the Civil War started in I think 1861, and I think it, 
it was done right when Lincoln, or before Lincoln was assassinated, right? So. Was assassinated. You remember? We were just right. Bang bang. Oh, yeah. And then um, the Chicago Fire was in 1871 or two or something like that. But then also there's one other bit of information that is really important for you all to know that Michael A. McNulty, our grandfather, right, Phyllis's husband, M.A. as some have called him, he was born on the opening day of the World's Fair and Columbian Exposition in Chicago. Wow. Right? The White City, The Devil in the White City, that book, you know, that was all about the World's Fair and all that, he was born on opening day. It was supposed to open in 1892, which would have been the 400th anniversary of Columbus discovering America. But in fact, they got delayed, and they weren't able to get it open until May 1st, 1893. So Grandma, Grandma had to, if she did, I suppose she did, had to somehow get herself to the hospital while the whole world was descending on Chicago uh, so that she could have her, and actually she had twins. He's got a twin brother, right? So, Daria Golot. So, when did you meet the twins? How did you find out that they were twins? Oh, oh, yeah. I'll tell you one quick story. It must be a hint. At Grandpa's few, or Grandpa's wake, right, we were told to go sit. It was in their house, right? It was in their, it was in their house. And they had the casket there and the door open, and there's Grandpa laying there. I've never seen a dead person in my life. I'm like, that's pretty scary, kind of freaky, right? How and old I, I have. I was like, eight. you were sick. I was eight. Okay, then I was six. Yeah, I was, I was very young. And I was told, sit there and don't move. You know, and I'm in my coat and tie. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, there's a dead guy there, and I'm sitting here. And then, the twin brother I didn't know walked through the door. And I said, oh my God. And I ran out the back door. Do you remember that? Yeah, I do remember. It was the four of us. It was Mary, I just told that same story. And our, our eyes went from the door to the cabin. What's going on? That was really creepy. So, uh, that, so I have a question. Oh, I, I, 